Welcome back everyone. It's been a little while, but Witch Queen is upon us and I thought now would be the best time to reflect on the metagame in its current state and probably for the last time before going into Witch Queen. So I'm going to try and make this video shorter than my other metagame breakdown and we're going to take a look at the weapon usage of course and then a small sample of subclass data that I have as well for us. We're going to try and compare from the last time we did a metagame breakdown which was quite some time ago, see how things have shifted or if it stayed the same, do the same for our very small sample size of subclass usage and then talk maybe a little bit about how these weapons might be changing and the metagame is going to be shaken up because of the changes coming in Witch Queen. Before we get into the metagame breakdown though, we do have a sponsor for today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. I feel this needs no introduction. This is one of the biggest games. There's so much to grind for and you can play it on PC and mobile, so you can always be grinding. But if you haven't seen it, let me tell you a little bit more about it. The game's got the vibes of a classic turn-based strategy game, but it's like completely modern and doesn't feel dated because of its really detailed graphics and fluid gameplay. Raid's got a lot of champions but it also has some pretty cool bosses and I want to talk about Sir Galaroth, Guardian of the Arcane Keep. He's kind of like a paladin that protects arcane potions but only the worthy can get their hands on them and to be worthy, you gotta beat him. He can be tricky if you're not ready but he is a little bit more straightforward. His main mechanic being his basic attack, it deals a bunch of extra damage to any champion without buffs so obviously you're gonna want to keep AoE buffs on your team at all times. Which seems straightforward, but it is complicated by the boss's left minion, which will strip all your team's buff every time it gets a turn. So, you want to deal with him first or use control debuffs to keep it out of the fight. Otherwise, it's pretty much straightforward and if you bring a balanced team, you should be good. Raid's got a ton happening this month with a fresh rotation of the Brutal Hydra boss and a ton of events and tournaments every single day including even some special Valentine's Day events where you can get your hands on a brand new legendary champion. Now's the best time to play, and if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get some cool bonuses, which is a free epic champion, Tayrel, 200k silver, an energy refill, an XP boost, and an ancient shard so you can summon those super special awesome champions as soon as you get them in game. So you can hop in and start playing raid now. So we're going to start by taking a look at weapons starting on the most recent week which was Bannerfall and this has DMT completely dominating the rest of the sandbox. Obviously in Witch Queen though DMT is getting a pretty hefty nerf with the rate of fire from the hip going down quite a bit so I expect this to drop and not be so dominant on these long range maps but I think the weapon will still be good and still be used. It's gonna have, I believe, a 130 RPM from the hip. Uh, it won't dominate the meta game like we see now, but essentially this is kind of like a hand cannon scout rifle. So I think when long range maps like this come up, it's definitely not gonna go away. Second to that, we have main ingredient. I talked about this in the last me uh, metagame breakdown. This doesn't surprise me at all. I think this main ingredient and fusion rifles are completely broken right now. And well, I mean, I think the usage is kind of reflecting that. You could say, well, it's one just single fusion with a perfect rule. But I don't know, I think this is telling of a bigger problem now that people have seen the potential of fusions. I think there are other rules, debatably even better rules, of things like Timeline's Vertex that could also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the potency of the main ingredient. The difference is, is that a lot of people got this specific role of the main ingredient from Xur, so it's going to see a lot of representation and there's a lot of fusions that are probably not seeing representation as individual weapons on this list. Again though, this doesn't surprise me, but in terms of uh, coming changes in Witch Queen, the main ingredient is getting nerfed with uh, Tap the Trigger getting nerfed, uh, which is a good change overall, but I don't think is enough at all for fusions as a whole. Chaperone, next to main ingredient, again, doesn't surprise me at all. These are kind of the two kings of close mid-range uh, special weapons. Uh, and Chaperone's also getting a nerf. I believe it's also getting a passive range nerf, which means it's going to have less range even without Roadborne and then less range with Roadborne. Uh, very good. But I don't know if this is going to be enough. I'm hoping it will be, but we'll just have to wait and see. Right now, though, of course, it's still dominating the meta, which is the same and consistent with what we were seeing in our last metagame breakdown. The Messenger 
came out to play uh, it's interesting i think the messenger generally comes out on these longer range maps so that's fine it kind of goes away on the meta game on the smaller map so i don't think there's anything to really worry about there it's pretty typical as luna still holding the top spot for the hand cannons fate bringer not on this list but the palindrome still on the list as well pretty interesting kind of trailing behind as luna probably because people feel that you need that kind of range on something like bannerfall lawrence driver up there still as well again this doesn't surprise me even on the close mid-range maps it was seeing usage it's been incredibly hard to combat and well yeah on the longer range maps it's gonna be even more so and luckily again this is another weapon getting a nerf in witch queen to get more flinch will that be enough again only time will tell but it's nice to see a lot of those weapons on this top metagame list that i've been dominating the weapon that's honestly pretty consistent with the last time we looked at the metagame getting nerfed so that'll shake up the metagame quite a bit last word coming up on this map though i'm assuming that's because people are pairing it with a sniper which makes sense we got 1k arch there on there as well and then fell winters is kind of our most used shotgun but fell winters also getting a nerf uh snipers somehow getting a buff though that one in witch queen was uh, very interesting to me not something i entirely agree with but again on bannerfall it makes sense that we're seeing snipers on the week before though on javelin it was crazy to see main ingredient break a million kills and just be the most used weapon again next to that was chaperone in terms of special weapons right after that in terms of primary weapons though as luna was following up main, main ingredient uh lawrence driver even up there uh in the top three special weapons top four overall pretty crazy stuff these weapons are incredibly difficult to counter and again this is very consistent week over week there's not much you can do about them they are putting way too much pressure on even the smartest of players for you know pretty much no cost or very very low cost in terms of what you actually have to do with them so yeah makes sense why they're at the top of the meta again luckily they are being changed though as luna still solidifying its spot though at the top of the meta as the hand cannon to use um palindrome again still there fatebringer was actually there for javelin as well but again i think a big thing about as luna that we talked about in the last metagame breakdown is this is very accessible and very easy to farm for so i don't think it's going to go anywhere it'll stay there at the top of this list for quite some time i want to take a look at javelin just because it's such a balanced map in the overall weapon usage hand cannon still dominating with 24 percent but i i think that's to be expected hand cannons are the most versatile weapons and they deal with special weapons the best so especially fusions so i would argue that that's why they are so high up um not only being incredibly high skill ceiling weapons and they have a uh, you know so much utility but they actually deal with fusions and uh special weapons better than any other primary i want to say so makes sense why they're up there shotguns still in second place shotgun kills still beating out fusion kills that's probably with the help of the chaperone considering that nearly a million of those kills is the chaperone if we were to subtract a million you'd have just you know a little bit more than the fusion kills so i don't know i guess uh, that makes sense but I, that's not entirely taking away all the slug shotguns they're kind of grouped into that one family so i don't know how truthful that stat really is but shotguns and fusions if you were to, if you were to kind of consider chaperone not existing in that pool are actually pretty toe to toe right now and i would give the edge to fusions in my personal opinion in terms of what's stronger snipers saw a good amount of usage though on javelin uh which is you know not as much as the other two special weapons but is telling of the state of special weapons i said this in the last time and this really does look repetitive well shotguns fusions and snipers uh come before any other primary weapon that isn't a hand cannon they're all the weapons that are making the difference in games uh, more so than pulses smgs uh, linear fusions were up there but more so than pulses smgs scouts sidearms uh, do you have the big three special weapons and the big problem that i have with the witch queen changes is yes there are good changes individually some decent changes but it doesn't solve this issue and um, there are some special ammo economy changes but they're not exactly too impactful i don't think so i don't know i i fail to see how they fix this problem and as a result i don't think the meta will change too much I do think it will change because of new weapons and nerfs will undoubtedly make this change 
but I think that the similar structure of hand cannons and the big three special weapons in terms of what's making the difference in games, uh, I don't think that will really change. Not Especially not with a sniper buff, I don't think. Now let's talk about exotic armor and subclass usage. I don't want to take too long on this, so again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go necessarily as in-depth as I did last time, but we're still going to look at our small sample size. I have a sample of about 150 players from when I played on Javelin, which isn't too bad. It's enough for us to still get a good snapshot of the meta, which is what this is meant to do, and it actually stays pretty consistent with what we saw last time with just a little bit of shifts which is interesting to comment on. Javelin and Wormhaven are both pretty close range, close mid range maps. So there shouldn't be too much variance in what people are choosing and why they're choosing it. So let's start by talking about the exotic armor that's being used. So right now Stompies is still in number one with 21.7% usage. However, it's tied by Aphidians now rising to be tied with Stompies at 21.7% usage. This is probably the biggest shift here and there's a degree of this that could just because, you know, be because it has variants or of course just the sample size is small. But in this case, we can take away some stories from this. This could mean that people maybe are anticipating a Stompies nerf. We don't have any official news of that at the moment, but maybe people are anticipating a nerf to Stompies, so they're moving and playing Warlock or Top Tree Dawnblade, and that could mean that they're picking up Aphidians as well as the best exotic for the job on Warlock, which would mean there's a shift of people coming from Stompies. There's also a potential that people aren't run running Stompies because from the last time I spoke about the meta, there's been a Nova Bomb uh, Axion Bolt, the supercharged build, and maybe people are running Aphidians with that and enjoying the Nova Bomb class because of those Axions that would lead to more people playing Warlock. That could be a cause in this small shift. But if, nonetheless, the Fidian aspect rising up to tie with Stompies shows that Aphidians are no joke. They're just as favored and as good as Stompies. So they're a, uh, they are a top exotic, no doubt. Next to that, we have transversive steps, which are about at the same exact usage rate, which is about 10% as the last time I did a metagame breakdown, which is pretty interesting. It's staying consistent. The next major shift that we have here is Worm Husk and Dune Marchers trading places. This metagame breakdown, I found that 6.7% usage was going to Worm Husk and 5% to Dune Marchers for the, I believe that's fourth and fifth spots. This is the exact, nearly the exact opposite of last time we did a metagame breakdown where Dune Marchers was at 6.8% and Wormhusk was at 5.1%. Literally nearly the exact opposite. And the story that we can tell from this, I think, is really that A, going back to Stompies, if people are anticipating that Stompies are going to get nerfed, I think Wormhusk, if you're playing a hunter, is the next best option and potentially even more annoying to play against option so people are seeing the value in that and starting to play worm husk and that would also tell us why stompies are also being used less per se but in terms of dune marchers this could also mean that players are just not playing titan as much since we talked last time in the last metagame breakdown i think a lot of people have expressed that titans are not in a good place in terms of metagame viability so we could see players stopping playing Titan as much and going to Warlock or Hunter and using some of the exotics we've already talked about because again you'd expect Dune Marchers to have a higher usage as they're the equivalent of Transverses and Stompies for Titans and they're still the highest Titan exotic in terms of usage rate but it's swapped places again like we mentioned. Next to that is One-Eyed Mask and this is interesting as well because Graviton Forfeit the last time was in this spot but now One-Eyed Mask is now rising to 3.3% usage. Graviton, the last time we talked, was 3.7% usage. Now it's fallen out of favor to 2.5% usage as we see on our chart. And One-Eyed Mask is kind of taking that spot. So maybe the people that are playing Titan as well are realizing that One-Eyed Mask is an incredible option and they're gonna be using that to try and make Titan the most viable it can be. Another interesting thing is Mask of Bacchus gaining some usage as well. I think there was some talk about the a dust field build and I used it myself where you get dust fields back insanely quickly to either slow enemies or zone people off or better yet use it for DR because of the small crystal it can spawn. So 
perhaps because of that, people playing Stasis with Hunter, they're also going to try out Bacchus with that to keep space. Also, Bacchus is an incredible tool to be using with fusions, which are at the top of the meta at the moment, to maintain space against shotgunners and quickly punish them or counter them. So that makes sense. Graviton Forfeit was being used with fusions previously in the last video or the last discussion we had, but it looks like it's fallen out of favor in favor or at least to be tied with stasis usage for this reason now as well. And then otherwise, all others is about 27.5 or 27%, 26.7 to be exact. And this is actually the same as last time, which was 27.5%. So again, some small shifts. We get a nice snapshot of the metagame and it stays relatively consistent which means i think there's some some truth to what we're doing here which is really cool i think let's wrap things up now let's talk about subclass usage i'm not going to go over the overall class usage just know that warlocks and hunters pretty much dominate titan and there's very few titans and i won't be going over every subclass but i am going to mention here the top standout subclasses that were being played starting with the number one spot going to top tree dawnblade with 16 percent representation and that is in line with the rise in Ophidian aspect and people using that exotic that would make sense next to that was a duo of hunter subclasses 10% on bottom arc strider 10% on pop night stalker so one of those is just because it's a great all-around class with a tier 3 super and that juggernaut kind of dodge and faster dodge as well so that's great the top tree night stalker i assume people are really getting on that invis train and maybe using invis with fusions i recall seeing a lot of that on this weekend and in general so that's probably why people are playing that we have another warlock class in the next spot with eight percent usage we have top tree nova i assume again this is the axion dart build and shortly after that we have at seven percent usage hunter revenant now this kind of top four is very reflective of the exotics that we see having representation and as we expected not a lot of titan in the meta because the only titan class that's really stand out with five percent usage is bottom striker next to that was middle tree striker at just under five percent usage but again the titan class is just on a small small piece of representation and the clear meta is more so top tree dawn night stalker arc strider and then we have the axion build and finally revenant for people trying to use worm husk and damage resist together most likely so that is our subclass metagame a lot of stuff is going to be changing the next time we do a talk here and i'm excited to do a metagame breakdown once witch queen hits because we're gonna have a bunch of new weapons there's a lot of changes i don't think the metagame for what we see right now is gonna shift too much even with the buffs and nerfs but the addition of new weapons will probably have new additions to the sandbox that will have a place maybe right now in you know our current kind of format in terms of subclasses though, everything is gonna change because we have Void 3.0 and we have a lot of new exotics to go with that to enhance some old and some new subclasses. So that should be interesting. So I very much expect the subclass metagame and exotic metagame to change. And we don't know what exotic armor changes, if any are happening. So a lot of shakeups here. Anyways, that's pretty much our established meta and snapshot of the meta for this season. And the next time we're gonna talk, it's gonna be in a new season. A new meta baby as a popular content creator i believe once said thanks for watching and listening take care